My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 102 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash IZ. In this episode, we shall be looking at the properties and uses of alkanons, the physical and chemical properties of alkanons, and the uses of alkanons. The first property of alkanon is that it has a boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius. 78 degrees Celsius. For an organic compound, this is high because the general property of organic compound is that they have low boiling point. Despite the fact that alkanol is an organic compound and it still has high boiling point, it's as a result of hydrogen bond. You will be asked, alkanols, organic compounds, generally have low boiling point. How come alkanols have high boiling point? It is as a result of hydrogen bond present. Most organic compounds are insoluble in water. How come alkanol is soluble in water? Because of the presence of hydrogen bond. Alkanols are neutral to litmus. They are neither acidic nor basic. These are the physical properties Jam expects you to know. And for the chemical property, alkanols undergo oxidation, they undergo esterification, and they undergo dehydration. Oxidation is addition of oxygen, one of the definition, removal of hydrogen, and there are more. We did all that under redox reaction. Remember? Yes, you do. For esterification, when alkanols react with acid or alkanoic acid, they will form esters and water. So under esters, one of the ways of preparing esters is esterification. And alkanol react with alkanoic acid to form esters and water. Esters are alkyl alkanoids. You see the alkyl group from one of the compounds, the oil group from the other one. We shall see that soon. Dehydration is the removal of elements of water. When an alkanol is dehydrated, what is formed? When an alkanol is oxidized, products are formed. Remember, we have primary alkanol, secondary alkanol, and tertiary alkanols. In terms of oxidation, primary alkanols can be oxidized either completely or partially. To oxidize alkanols, we use two oxidizing agents. You can use any of them. The first one is acidify hepta ozodichromate. H plus CRO2O7, acidified hepta ozochromate. The second oxidizing agent we can use for alkanols is acidified permanganate, MnO4. These are the oxidizing agents. When you partially oxidize alkanols, which is if you don't oxidize them completely, you will form alkana. When you oxidize completely, you form alkanoic acid. This is for primary alkanols. When you oxidize primary alkanols, partially you get an alkana. When you oxidize primary alkanols completely, you get alkanoic acid. How about secondary alkanols? When you oxidize secondary alkanols, you get alkanones, you get ketones. When you oxidize primary alkanols, partially, you get alkanas or aldehydes. Completely, you get alkanoic acid. But for secondary alkanols, secondary alkanols are alkanols when OH group is on carbon, on secondary carbon. When you oxidize secondary alkanols, you get alkanones, that is ketones. Meanwhile, 
especially our canons, canons be oxidized. Let's see primary canon here. The general formula for canon or the structural formula is ROH. Here, this is the OH group and it is attached to this carbon. This is an alkyl group. It can be C it, or CN, H2N plus 1. It can be long chain or branch chain or whatever. Looking at this guy, comparing to this, you will see that from here to here is arrow. Why here is HHOH? -H the arrow here is it, uh, propyl C3, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H7, which is an arcane that has lost one hydrogen. It can also be a longer chain or just one carbon. So, to save us the stress of writing, since the archive group can be any length, we use arrow to say archive generally. This arcanon is oxidized in the presence of acidified heptaoxydichromate. On partial oxidation, we form arcanon. Arcanon is CHO. This arrow represents a high group. It can be any length. Look at it. This is butana. This CHO is here. This other part you see here is the arrow. Arrow which represents the archive group. It can be any length. 1 carbon, 5, 10 carbon, whatever. So this is general formula. This is specific compound dealing with. If arcano is partially oxidized, it will form arcana. Which means, butan 1 or, or butanol, which is an arcanol, if it is partially oxidized, it will form butanol. So butanol is an arcanol. When arcanol is oxidized or complete oxidation of arcanol will give you arcanoic acid. The functional group for arcanoic acid is COOH. As you can see here, COOH. And this is the archive group. So here you see the R, uh, functional group COOH, and here is the alkyl group. Arcana, arcanons, partially oxidized, will give you arcana. Arcanons, completely oxidized, you get arcanoic acids. Example, when you oxidize butanol or, or butanol or one butanol, you get butanol. When you further oxidize that, you get butanol. Acid. Ladies and gentlemen, primary arcanons can be completely oxidized to give you arcanoic acid. They can be partially oxidized or halfly oxidized to form arcanons. Secondary arcanons are oxidized to form arcanons. And tertiary arcanons cannot be oxidized. Let's see example of oxidation of secondary arcanons. Now look at this compound. It has the OH group, which is an arcanon, and this arcanon is on this carbon. This carbon has two other carbons linked to it directly. So this is a secondary carbon. Therefore, this is a secondary arcanon, and it is with two O. One, two, three, four. O, arcanon, position carbon two, so two O. Roots, roots. One, two, three, four, four carbon. Any attachment? No. When but two or is oxidized using acidified heptaoxydichromate, you will simply form butan two O. Butan two O. Remember, oxidation is the removal of hydrogen. Once this hydrogen is removed, then this double bond comes back to give you this. This is the functional group for arcanons. And the difference between arcanons and arcanas is that C double bond to oxygen is in between two archive groups. Here is an arrow. C O O. Here is another arrow. Methyl, ethyl, then the C double bond to O. So when secondary arcanons are oxidized, they will form arcanone or ketones. When arcanones react with arcanoic acid, they will form esters and water. Now, when ethanol, which is an arcanone, 
as a representative, react with propanoic acid, functional group COOH, functional group OH, you will form ethyl propanoid. Ethyl propanoid. This is ethyl and this is propanoid. Functional group of ester is COO. Yeah, that will work. Now look at this. For this ethanol, the functional group is OH. For this acid, is COO. If this H from acid joins with OH from alkanol, water is formed. So what is remaining here, like this, and what is remaining here, like this, they will join together to form ethyl propanoid. The alkyl part, the first part, is gotten from the alkanol. The OH part is gotten from the acid. If we join these two guys, we will get the OH and the H with acid. They've left to marry. This will remain. This is CH3CH2. This is CH3CH2COO. The alkyl group remaining here and the OH group remaining here, they will marry. Join it together, you will see the product CH3CH2, which is from the ethanol, ethyl. Then you see the remaining part CH3CH2COO, the propanoid group. The alkyl part is gotten from the alkanol, and the OH group is gotten from the acid. That is esterification. It is a reversible reaction. Ester and water can react to give us alkanol and alkanoic acid. The reverse of esterification is hydrolysis. We have the dehydration of ethanol. When ethanol is dehydrated in the presence of concentrated H2SO4, it can either form ethene or ethoxyethene. Dehydration of ethanol can give ethene or ethoxyethene. When you dehydrate ethanol in using excess H2SO4, at high temperature, you will form ethene. When you dehydrate ethanol using excess H2SO4 at low temperature, you will form ethoxyethene. At high temperature, you will form ethene. At low temperature, you will form ethoxyethene. Generally, if Jam says, which of the following is a product of dehydration of ethanol? And it is in the option, just go with it. But if they got detail to give you temperature, high temperature, it is low temperature, it is it is. Ladies and gentlemen, for oxidizing agents, when you use acidified hepta ozodichrome 7, the color will change from orange to green. When you use acidified potassium perma uh, permanganate, the color will change from purple to colorless. And the uses of alkanos are fear in raising cars, fear in rockets, as antifreeze, solvent for drugs, tincture, cosmetics, and perfumes, then as fear generally. When iodine is mixed with ethanol, you form tincture of iodine. That has medical application. Wow, this is it. Chemical properties of alkanos, physical properties of alkanos, and uses of alkanos. I hope you found this helpful. See you in the next episode. And ensure to get the Flash Nana Jam app. Subscribe to this Flash Nana YouTube channel if you've not, and tell others about it.